Good morning. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Hope all's well. Um, so today we've got a live session on with a sculpture artist. Amazing. Good stuff. Um, he designs kinetic uh, sculptures. So it would be good to speak to uh, Will, who is the sculpture artist who's coming on. Um, and let's discuss. Sorry, my eyes look, yeah, just woken up. Ramadan, fasting, you know, it's not easy. Managing work, all sorts. Um, so let's just wait. Vijay, I would like to do a live session with you one day. So I'm going to send you an invite soon. If you're up for it. Yeah, so as I said, we've got a sculpture artist coming on. Here we are, William. Your lives are good. Keep going. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Good, good. And yourself? Yeah, very well. Beautiful day. I don't even need to ask you what you do because I can see the sculptures at the back. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of out testing them in the wind. How's life? Yeah, life's good, yeah. Lucky here on a farm in Herefordshire, so can't complain, to be honest. We're as lucky as so can be. Not, so, you're, so you're not that far from me. I mean, depends where, where you are. Watford or St. Albans or... Where? Hey, right, yeah, we're... We're um, sort of west of Heref West Herefordshire, so we're probably a couple of hours away. Okay, all right. So I, I live up in uh, North Holt, which is like, yeah, about 45 minutes from where you are, roughly. Sure. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, yeah. So, William, I know that we're, we're discussing your sculptures uh, today, and it's like the first time I've actually had someone who's a sculpture artist on my uh, live. It's good to have different kinds of people doing different things, you know, so that it doesn't get boring if I just keep talking to property professionals all the time. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, so before we start, William, if you can just introduce yourself as to who you are and what you do. I know it's a bit windy out there, but yeah. Yeah, sorry, is, it, is the uh, sound quality all right or should I go out to the wind? Uh, it's a bit windy, so... Yeah, let me go. Is but 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 we can carry on. Me. But we can carry on once you're uh, once we're sort of in the conversation. Then you can show us the sculptures. It'd be great. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Good stuff. Um, so, yeah, is that better sound quality now? Yep, this is perfect. Okay. Right. So yeah, my name is Will Carr, and I class myself as a kinetic sculptor, um, which I make uh, stainless steel sculptures that move in the wind, um, and have lots of pieces around the world now and doing various commissions at the moment. So yeah, it's all going very well. There's a small, small community of us in the world. Um, but yeah, a growing community as, as uh, technology allows us to make more complex sculptures really. Can you tell me what this uh, kinetic sculptures is all about and how did you come about doing something like that? I mean, there are lots of other sculptures that you can possibly create, you know, with pottery, with marbles, with all sorts, you know, with... Yes, yeah. Uh, so my background... Um, if you um, can just talk about, like, when, when you were young and all that kind of stuff, did was was this the idea that you had that, okay, when I grow up, I want to become a sculptor? I mean, yeah, a sculpture so, artist. So I I was brought up on a farm in oh. Herefordshire, and then I studied um, civil engineering originally. Oh, okay. Um, then found that farming suited me a lot better, being out um, more physical side of engineering and fixing things and creating. So um, went back to the farm and started creating insects and things out of old scrap metal, which then um, I was amazed that I could make such detailed things, to be honest. And then 
bringing back in my engineering skills, really. Um, so you were making, my... like, small ants and flies and all that kind of stuff using um, scrap metal? They were, la- they were large versions of small things. So I'd make a two-meter large bird. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, and that side of things. Um, and now I, I solely make kinetic things now. I mean, did you just wake up one day and say that, okay, I've got all this scrap metal here and I'm going to use it and make sculptures out of it? it was that the Exactly, whole... yeah. So it was, there it... was no thought process. There was nothing. You just saw the scrap metal. You had the uh, degree of being a civil engineer and then you just started doing... So started playing around and lots of play created wow. where I am today, really. So and at, huge the, at, the farm, at the farm that you're at, I mean, um, sorry, I'm talking sort of off topic out here. Uh, yeah. but, but the farm that you have right now, I mean, what sort of animals do you farm there? Uh, so we've got um, beef cattle at the moment, um, and we make uh, compost as well, which is okay. called Cars, Cars Special Organic Compost, which you can find online, okay. which is selling very well this year as everyone's in their garden so much. Absolutely. Um, possibly possibly more than selling uh, like normal every year, you know, like it must be yeah. off the off the record right now, like uh, selling uh, It compost. is, yeah, it's, it's going well, but all, a lot of the garden centres have been closed, so that yeah. the market has... We've had more private sales, but um, so if anyone yeah. can, if anyone wants compost, they can go onto your uh, website, which is car cars compost. Car um, compost. They Google that, and then you yeah. deliver that, or or you send it. We to deliver it in large volumes, okay. um, or it's it's generally collection only for smaller stuff. Okay, so if I um, want one bag or something, I can just come and collect it from yourself. Exactly, yeah, you can you can uh, turn up and collect compost or soil improver for gardens. And this is this is like organic compost, like because it's it is yes in your farm. It's produced on the by farm. yourselves, everything. So uh, it's more yeah. organic. It's more organic than other other compost. I don't know how exactly. to class, I don't know how to class compost as organic. It's, it's all yeah. organic. Right. I guess it's all organic in the end, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a high quality product. Um, we've been supplying um, Windsor Castle, so the Queen wow. is using it. So yeah, it's a it's a good product. Good stuff. We'll uh, check it out. Um, yeah. My, so the the roses might be coming out even more red. Yes, exactly. Yeah, more <laughs> color. Everyone needs more color to their life. <laughs> um, so now that we're we're sort of we have a background of what you've been doing and everything and then sculpture artist i mean did you have the artist factor in you from a very young age that this um, is this so, is the reason you went out and did civil engineering i mean what was the not so much i was always creating but creating not as a piece of art but i'd always from the, the age of six i've got a picture of my dad with me with my dad making a bird feeder and things like that. So I was always making stuff on the farm and um, always very hands-on. And that allowed me then just through play to learn the skills. Um, so I think it's something everyone can learn, even if they don't in- how, initially how, think. How is, it, how is it growing up on a farm? Because my kids, I, every day, you know, my, my daughter who's seven years old, she's like, oh, dad, can we get a rabbit? You know, if I, if I, <laughs> if I, if I, if I wanted to have a pet, I would have a lamb. You know, I'd look after yeah. it and all that kind of stuff. I was like, yeah, we'll 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 get a farm soon. We'll do something. Yeah, it is, it is um, a stunning how, place to but, be but how is it? How is it like, you know, dealing with all of that? You know, you're like animals every day. Uh, you're, de- you're sort of handling them. You're cleaning them. You're looking after them. You know, do you even get time for yourself sometimes? Because I yes, know I, I, I'm speaking to one of my clients in Scotland. And currently they are going through lambing and yep. they had, they were delivering, they mentioned about 250 lambs. Yeah, sure. We don't do lambs, luckily. That can be um, a hard old slog whilst they're lambing. They can be in there all day and night, yep. wait, making sure that they come out safely. Yep. Yeah, it's a very be- beautiful place to be brought up and you really feel connected to the, the world around you. Because we're constantly, Mostly constantly nature. Weather. Yeah, really. And it it really, really helps with art as well. I think you have to have that connection with the world around you to be able to make pieces that reflect the world, really. Absolutely. Um, So so the other things that influence my art would be my hobbies, like um, paragliding is one of the main things I do. Okay. Um, 
So you're understanding on a monthly the, basis, weekly basis. Um, so sort of two or three times a month in the summer, probably. Okay. Um, and do you go? Do you go like nearby uh, or? Yes, we've got some nice hills near here in the Brecon Beacons, um, Longmind, Malvern Hills. Yeah, all of South Wales has some fantastic hills. And you, which and, you, and, you and you just take up your gear and you go and do it yourself, or you have someone training you and. Or you I know, have a coach or something. Yeah, I do it all by myself now. I've been doing it for about twelve years now. Wow! So, and yeah. you go and you go on your own, or you have friends and family who come up with you. Um, there's always people on the hill as well. Okay. Um, on a good day. Um, so my best flight was eighty-seven kilometers unpowered. So taking off in a hill, and that's about half the height of Wales, just going yeah. from cloud to cloud. So wow. you really get a connection with this, this, the air and the sky around you. Um, and understanding. Tell me, tell me, you had a, gro- a GoPro camera or something with you to take that to cover. I had, a, I, I had my phone. I did take a few photos, okay. but I try not to record too much because it's quite a, a personal experience in the sky. I don't I want mean, to be distracted by taking images, I mean, um, yeah. but I, I do sometimes. Good stuff. I mean, I, I, I would think about that maybe two years ago, but now for all this kind of stuff, I just capture it. You know, it's 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 amazing yeah. to I, I went to Egypt in February and, and um, I've never taken my phone underwater. Never. You know, yeah, it's 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 uh, daunting, like taking your phone. What if it goes wrong? Something's going to go wrong, you know. But took yeah. it down for the first time. It was absolutely amazing the shots you can bring back up, and and it was really good it's to so see. So nice it. to share as well. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. talking about your uh, sculpture, this is the reason we're talking today. So the sculptures that you were doing before, you were making insects and 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 animals. Were you making animals as well, or just larger yeah, insects, insects, animals, birds, frogs? Okay. Uh, Frogs, birds, and insects, really. And then you uh, do you, you manage to sell these on to other people, or you have them in your house somewhere? Yeah, so I would um, do lots of exhibitions around the UK. Um, okay. Probably do about six or seven different exhibitions each year, okay. which allow me to build my reputation up um, and get my name out there, as okay. well as doing lots of online online work. As an artist, you've got to be pushing... Uh, a lot of different avenues because it's not the easiest yep. industry to be in. I mean, but, um, uh, but are there a lot of people doing this kind of stuff right now? Um, there is there is a reasonable community, yes. Yeah. There's not many on the kinetic side, which helps me out. Um, there's Anthony Howe, which many people have, will have heard of, um, whose work comes up on the internet a lot. Okay. Um, but the joy of the kinetic stuff is very good for Instagram and the, the sort of small clips of... Um, 10 second shots. Really yeah, I mean, I, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen some of the stuff that you have and that's why the whole reason to do a live with you because there might be someone out there who's got some sort of skill and, you know, they might want to put it to work and, and see if they have scrap metal at home and come out with something like that, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I encourage everyone to play. It's very important. I, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. So what was, um, when you sold your first first sculpture did you feel like you're selling away your 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 sort of imagination or no was it strictly business? No, no it's more of a it's a, a compliment that somebody enjoys the way that my brain works i guess yeah and um, so i always always took it as a it's a it's a, a a great joy to sell something to someone who it makes them happy and then it's a reward to me to and how much? How much did your first? How much did your first sculpture sell for? Um. So originally they would be sort of three, three hundred ish, three hundred pounds. Okay. Um. And now, yeah, as you build a reputation and your profile gets better, they're sort of towards I mean, eight thousand. I, I, I know you sent me the uh, brochure with the listings of it, and one of them in there was around twelve thousand pounds. So yes, I, really, the new I, piece. I, yeah. I I want to see that new piece once we uh once we get talking about it. So then once you finish your you know building animals and all that kind of stuff, then what sort of put you in that kinetic sculpture mode kind of? How did you how did you come about making your first kinetic sculpture? 
Yeah, so there was a period. So I was making I was making reasonable money with my um, figure, figurative work, but then changing over, there was quite a long period of learning in between. So okay. there was a period where I didn't get as much income whilst I learned all these different skills on how to balance things and all the um, all the specific joints and everything like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, just it came about quite easily um, yeah. just by putting the time in. I could I could see very well how to do it. It was just making it repeatable and consistent and strong. Was, and you was, built yeah. all these pieces on your own without any help, without any manpower from um, So I've else. got a couple of people who work for me at the moment okay. um, who help because I'm taking over our family farm as well. So I'm, I need uh, people to help do the finishing work, which is um, grinding to make the nice reflective surface. Um, and, and, they do, and, and all of that is done in your farm. You must have a separate place in your farm where you, where you build your art uh, or your sculptures. Yes, yeah. Very lucky to have a, a nice workshop in the farm, um, with, which is very well kitted out now. It was, it was a nice workshop before, but um, yeah, I spent a lot of time making it efficient and a great space to be in, really. So take um, me through your first kinetic sculpture, what it was and how long did it take you to build and, 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 and what did it sell for? So the first pieces were more maquettes. So they would they would be very cheap bearings off eBay for a few pounds, putting them together to get the concept. And I made probably three or four maquettes really that that they worked for a few years and then they fall apart because they they're not engineered to a high spec. Um, Falling then, apart meaning they just um, they, they were just small but small cheap bearings just for okay. me to understand how things move. Okay. Um, whereas now I I do all the maths behind everything to work out what size bearings I need um, for different wind loading situations. So, so just, this is where this is where your engineering degree comes into play. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And then I can model it all on the computer as well. So I can do a 3D model, find out the balance points um, on the computer, and then I get it all laser cut in a company nearby. So it all assembles together quite easily then. So um, your 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 first sculpture that was the learning part. Then when you made your actual proper sculpture, how long yeah. did that take you from start to finish? I mean, it's good to know that. Yeah. In today's day and age, like I mean, was is this kinetic sculpture a new thing because people are doing it now, or has this always been there? Like, um, there has been people around. Um, Alexander Calder was in the 30s and 40s, I think. He was one of the pioneers. Okay. Um, there's... I has mean, been something people... old as in, in the 1600s, 1500s, like we are uh, about right. old. Yeah. Yes, not, not so much. There, there is sort of hints of people playing around with movement within art. Okay. Okay. But never, not so much people uh, not basing their career on it or so it just uh, grew it just grew in the 1900s kind of from what you mentioned in the 1930s yes, 1940s. Yeah. for oh. a high quality product the, the revolution with bearings i guess was essential yeah to be yeah. able to 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 make it consistent and strong and safe uh, and then when you when you made your first uh sculpture how long did it take you to the, the proper it one? would have been, it would have been probably a few hundred hours of playing wow of playing, yeah. <laughs> of playing, of, of, of creating. Well, not play. So the probably let's say a hundred hours after I've played, and um, then then it comes to shape basically. Then you come. Yes, the yeah. Hundred um, hours. Maybe. You mentioned that you do the measurements and the and the balances on your uh, computer. You you check out how the balance points and everything. Are. From computer yeah. to groundwork, how long does that take you? Um, so it's probably for, to get it from the computer into a final product. That's probably about, uh, or, or even even just from the computer to when you start. How long does that take? All right. Um, from the once I've made it on the computer, that's probably 150 hours. Wow. Uh, well, maybe 100 hours. It's a lot of time. Wow. Um, I've just started using a, a team of people in India to try and help reduce some of my workload on that. And they're very helpful um, and very skilled at it. 
Was it was um, it was it easy to find people there? It was actually. Yeah, did there's some actually, good. Websites. Did you actually travel there, or or you just found uh, them no, on the internet? No, there's, there's a very good website called Upwork, which okay. allows freelancers to work. Okay. Um, which I recommend for anyone with, with who wants CAD modeling or rendering or any any computer skills. They they're all everyone's rated on this, and you build up a. A portfolio, so it's a very so you can good... have you can have architects, you can have artists, you can have sculpture artists, you can have engineers. Engineer, it's mainly all, for engineers. Yeah, so all sorts of people doing that kind of stuff on that website called Upwork. Yes, yeah, very very helpful. You can you could pay someone for two hours work. You could pay someone for hundred hours work a week. So just pay... just bringing that into uh, property right now. Sorry. If yeah. I if I have a piece of land and I and I want to get the right uh, set of apartments or houses or whatever they they can come up if I send them all the details of that land they would be able to do the drawings and all that kind of stuff or exactly yeah yeah oh they they, can. they would be perfect yeah so that means find... that that means that all these architects that are spending I don't know millions amount of money on keeping staff out here they could possibly just get it freelanced up in india exactly yes that's definitely possible and the joy with using india as well there's very good communication they generally speak very good english yeah. you could choose anyone from all around the world really but then how um, do you deal with how do you deal with the time difference um they generally try to suit our time scale okay uh, so our 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 9 to 5 basically that's how they work yes yeah okay cool um, um so coming back to this uh sculpture you mentioned that it takes you 100 hours or 150 hours to to take it from the computer onto the workshop and then start building it and then once you yep. start started to build it how long does it take you from there so that's probably about the same again another 100, 100 and 150 hours yes yeah, probably wow. 100 hours wow. in real life maybe well maybe less now that i've i've produced a few of them we have become very efficient okay. with making sure we've got the workshop well set up with all the right toolings has there has there has there ever ever been the case that you you've done your sculpture and it looks perfect and you know sometimes you uh switch off the lights in your in your workshop you go back home and go to sleep and the next morning you turn up and it's like bang on the floor has that ever happened hey, right no 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 any no, any, any any sort of funny stories that you've had in uh, while 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 doing doing your sculptures? There's points where I, if I'm working into the night and I just want to see my sculpture come together, and it gets to ten ten or eleven o'clock or whenever, and then sometimes I think I probably shouldn't weld this bit because well, once you welded it, it's not the easiest to undo sometimes. Is it? So you so really you got it, so you leave it for the next day or something just. Yeah, I make sure that I'm not make, making the wrong decisions because once you've had, I'm sure everyone's had the experience of working and then they actually a bit too tired. Um, so just got to yeah. be aware that you're not getting too tired and think, um, make sure you're thinking straight, really. So come back to Good it stuff. after a, a break and make sure that you're doing the right thing. But that's, with welding, that's, you don't get a second that's chance. With, that's with any work, right? With, with any work, really, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Even even writing up a, a lettings contract, for example. Sometimes yeah, I bet. I, sometimes, yeah. sometimes I like to do it in the in the day. You know, when you're fresh. You know, there are certain clauses or anything, whatever. But any type of work, if you feel, I think if you feel tired, doing it to the point where you can't carry on anymore, take a break and come back to it after some hours or the next morning and, and you know, carry it's on. But especially, especially when you're doing art, you need that free space in your mind, you know, that possibly you're doing it right now in that frame of mind that, okay, I can do it. But tomorrow when you start up again, it might be that you come up with something totally a different, different, solution, different yeah. solution and that yeah. would just make your life even more easier. Exactly. Yeah, that's probably the most valuable thing I've learned over the years. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, if you can talk us through one of your sculptures and go out in the wind and 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 show us the the sculpture you've recently yeah. uh, built. And so this is one that I've finished um, this season. Okay. Um, and it's about 
3.2 meters high, I think. Okay. And three meters wide. Okay. Um, so this is relatively heavy piece, but it moves amazingly well because over the years I've learnt the exact angles and distances between the bearings that you what need. Is it, to try what is it? What is it? What is it showing over here? Really? Uh, well, what? What are you? What are you trying to show from this piece of art or this piece of sculpture that you have? Um, so this one. I don't always like to tell people what each piece is based on because okay. people bring so many different conclusions to it. Okay. But my thought on it was crashing waves. But I like it when other people don't see the same as me as well. Crashing waves. Um, yeah, crashing waves in the ocean. But oh, yeah. not not ever not not everyone sees that. There's I mean, I can I can I can idea. see the I can see the analogy behind it. It's it's uh, it's different, you know. Yeah, and, and then long, the other piece. How long? How long did it take you to build this? Um, this one would be similar amount of time. So two hundred. A lot of design time. Hours. Yeah, probably about three hundred. Wow. Um, maybe more. Um, but because I make a few of the same pieces, it allows me to share the cost of the design time. Then. And and they, are they are they really heavy? Um, about thirty kilos. So not not ridiculously heavy. I can move them around by myself if I need to. Yeah. Um, and they they all come apart and can be shipped. They can be put they together. Can, they can be shipped and, anywhere in the world. They can be shipped anywhere in the world and put together on site by and who anyone. Would, who would? I mean, let's say if, if the person who is ordering it, let's say up in Manchester or something. I don't want to say U.S. or or the Middle East right now. Uh, but just make your life easier. Let's say someone's ordered it in Manchester and they want you to fix it for them. Yep. Would you, um, would I you... often do. Del I'll deliver around the UK often and install. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's a delivery fee depending on location and how um, specific, site specific, if they want it concreted in or anything, there'd be a higher cost. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a simple process to install them. They're very uh, simple substructures which get dug under the ground. Okay. So that square would be under the ground. Then. Oh, okay. So, so the stand at the bottom would be under the ground, and then. Exactly. Yeah. Then it then it just comes out of the the earth would be there. Okay. So it's just the middle bit coming out. Um, and all this all this welding is done all the way up to fix these pieces together. Exactly. Yeah, all along the subs, all along the different structures. And and is this one also called the crushing wave? Uh, this one's called choreography, um, and it's based on a dan a dancer, a human dancing. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I can I can sort of see because it's 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 uh, maybe a bit lighter than the first one, I guess. Yes. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, so my girlfriend is a dancer. Um, and she, I took her proportions and uh, made them into a sculpture, basically. Wow. wow. And uh, yeah, a few uh, people, probably a, maybe a third of people notice. I can, or I, think can, that I, it, can right. I can, I can, see it. I mean, do you think it's, uh, you know, how in the uh, choreography or even in um, in the Olympics, sometimes they have that. Uh, ballet sort of thing where the man and the woman are dancing together and the man sort of holding the women in the in the air and and the woman's dancing. Yeah, sure, yeah. So this is something yeah. like that, I guess. I guess the man yeah, in the brilliant. bottom stand and the woman's in the hand and like it's because of the wind, it's sort of turning around and yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's a good description. Yeah, I like it. You should get me as your salesman then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely welcome. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely commission to anyone who gets sales for me. Absolutely. Feel free to get in touch. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a really good piece. I like I like I, I really like this one. It's really nice. Yeah. And what's the Brilliant. what's what's the cost of these two, uh, William? Um. So here we go. Let's go back. Uh, this one is uh, seven nine fifty. Okay. Um, and stands at four point one meters tall. Okay. Um, and the this one's called choreographia. Yep. Um, this piece is um, called momentum and is six nine fifty. Six nine fifty. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. It's really it's really amazing the way you build them and design them. I mean, this is the first I've actually come across someone 
in in real life. I mean, normally you would see these sculptures in a garden or or you know somewhere in a historic place or something like that. But you never really pay attention to it. Okay, you see it and then you walk past it. But now you can actually, like, now that I see it, I see someone's artwork, see someone's hard work behind all of this stuff, the design, the thought process that must be going through it. Like, for example, the, the choreography that you've got, you know, it's a lot of thought process that, okay, what do I come up with and, and what should it be showing to the outer world like if i don't have a creative mind or if i don't have an artistic mind then i would think this is a metal tree you know yeah but it's not it's someone's art like you know a lot of times that i've been to art uh, galleries and stuff you know you see those paintings where the artist has just splashed the paint i'm like is that art like what is that i can do it my 3 year old daughter can do it you know but it's actually someone's thought process what they're going through at that moment and discussing uh or or thinking about actually and sure. how long did you have to sort of uh, think about making the choreography i mean did you did you see your um, i want to do this this is so that that's probably over about a year yeah, that that I would spend thinking about okay. them. So go through the process of sketching around a campfire quite often, um, and then okay. cutting out loads of pieces of cardboard, which is sort of over weeks and weeks so that you can think about it and come back to it and think about it and keep altering shapes. And then wow. you scale it up, project it onto a wall to check that it still scales well, check okay. that it looks good in a bigger scale. Okay. And that's probably a few months really of thinking before it even gets onto the computer or wow. a model so even it even before it gets onto the computer there's months of thinking and uh, the processes that go to it and exactly yeah it even the computer and then you check the balance points and all that kind of stuff exactly yes yeah a wow. lot of um sort of spread out thinking it, it, it's hard to quantify the hours when it's so spread out really because you're in the shower and you're thinking about it and you're on a walk and you're thinking about it. So it's all mulling over in the background, really, to develop the, the designs. When, uh, you mentioned that you supply compost to the Windsor Castle. Have you supplied your sculpture yet? No, not yet. The Queen does need one, though, doesn't she? Yeah, <laughs> you should make one. Yeah, yeah. Put a royal stamp on it. Absolutely. Why not? You know, that's, <laughs> how, that's, how, that's how a lot of uh, artists uh, do get recognized because they draw something for the Queen or make something for the Queen. And then through that, they get their first break or whatever but it's you know it's a thought that i think you yeah should, sure no that's a good idea you yeah. should possibly consider that and plus our birthday just went so you might as well gift her something yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah a sculpture as a gift so that, that would be good wouldn't it <laughs> um but uh what's next what's next in your sculpture world what are you what are you thinking about right now i know i don't want you to give out too much but just a few, uh, you know, do you also take personalized orders if someone wants something made? Do you do that kind I, of stuff? Yeah, it's a good question. I tend not to because the amount of design time that has to go into each piece okay. um, is so large that a, a personalized commission would have to be a very high value, really, to, to warrant the time. Whereas I try to make, I make often 10 of these same pieces to okay. keep the design time spread out between a few pieces. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but it, it's something I will likely do in the future when and the are, right mission you, comes are up. You, are you currently going through new designs at the moment? Um, yes, I've always got stuff in the background which is slowly developing. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, current, currently working on the, the £12,000 piece that you were saying about. Yep, yep. Um, which is, it's coming together well. I've, I'm nearly getting there with it. So okay. I've had the companies do all the the precision work for making the bearing housings and things and pick those up yesterday. Yeah. So I'm getting to the point of balancing in the next few days, which is some of the so most exciting bit so when you it, first it, see it in it the wind. Be, is it going to be ready for the summer? It will be, yes. I hope to have it ready in the next month, hopefully. Cool. Um, so, yeah, watch this space. Absolutely. I mean, I, I am really, uh, we've got, you sent me the details about these sculptures and I've already 
uh, put them out to a few people who might be interested in possibly selling them or even buying them. Uh, depends where yeah. they can fit uh, them in their, uh, where can they fit them in their gardens. Uh, well, thanks for passing on my it's details. Been, it's been it's been amazing uh, talking to you and knowing about your journey and your career and and how you are um, sort of coming up with all these ideas to uh, develop these sculptures uh, that you are uh, so finely making. You know, I, I'm really amazed at some of these two designs that you've got in front. Um, but thank you so much for sharing all your uh, knowledge and your thoughts, you know. Um, do you also, one final question, do you also run classes for kids who might want to learn this kind of stuff? We, um, we do. I, I don't myself, but I have other artists who work who have workshops on the farm, and that is offered as a service as well. He's very a very good teacher. Um, okay. who, and, um, and and what do they teach? Um, we'll teach welding and blacksmithing and um, general creating or fabricating in and, metal. And, and how much do these uh, courses start from? Um, so I think they are around two hundred pounds per day. Okay, fine. So that's including um, use of the workshop and things. Okay. So very reasonable. Cool. So if, if someone if someone wanted to teach their kid how to weld and all that kind of stuff, they can send them to you to do that. Yes, do yeah. Get in touch with me or um, Frederick Andrews. It's Super. Uh, is his name? So, yeah. Super. Thanks for uh, thanks for chatting to me. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's it's getting super windy out there. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But thank you so much, Will. Have yeah, brilliant. Thanks, sir. And enjoy Appreciate the, your, the rest your of your day, whatever you're doing, farming or sculpturing, you know, enjoy. Yeah, and you. Yeah, have a good day. Thanks you a lot. Too. Take Cheers. care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, that was uh, Will Carr, who designs kinetic sculptures. It was really amazing talking to him and learning about the ideas, the thought process, the work, the design, the hours that he puts in to just make one sculpture. Absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you to all the viewers that joined in and uh, sort of, you know, got themselves enlightened in terms of how people create art. I really want to bring on more artists and you know, it's in conversation right now with people who could come on the live session and discuss how painters, for example, or people who work with pottery or, you know, even people who design wallpapers, all that kind of stuff. So I'm speaking to a lot of people to get them on my live session so soon. But thank you so much. We've got another session at three and another at six. So watch out. Thank you so much. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.